I'm pretty sure that if you locked me in a room for the rest of my life, I'd never get bored. My mind goes about a million miles an hour, and I have a rare talent of visiting far off dreams without ever leaving my seat. If my mind goes that crazy locked in a room, you can only imagine how restless my mind gets when the weather outside gets nice. In these days of budding summer, I'm struggling to be disciplined. In an email I just received from a close friend, he said, discipline is delayed gratification. I've been pondering that phrase for the last few weeks and it's slowly beginning to sink in. He was right. If I would just discipline myself now, I'll be able to be more fully relished in the joys of later. This can be practically applied to work, study, sports training, or even more greatly, our walk with Christ. I really think that's what Paul was getting at in 1 Corinthians 9, 27, when he wrote, but I discipline my body and keep it under control, lest after preaching to others, I myself should be disqualified. Paul was fond of using athletic metaphors to get his point across. And in this chapter, he talked about running in such a way as to win the prize. When he speaks of disciplining his body and keeping it under control, he's saying that I pummel my body, making it my slave, not to allow me to do whatever I feel like, but staying committed to the larger task at hand, namely to glorify God. I'm sure that Paul used the term disqualified with the Greek games in mind. At the Greek games, there was a herald who announced the rules of the contest, the names of the contestants and the names and cities of the winners, but he would also announce the names of any contestants who were disqualified. I'm with Paul. I don't want my name, metaphorically speaking, to be on the disqualified list. So is discipline just this big game of mind over matter? Well, perhaps in some ways, but more likely, discipline is working out of grace. I believe that discipline is practical grace. When we feel like we just can't go any further, we must remember that God will practically give us grace to put one foot in front of the other. Not too long ago, I had the opportunity to be at a dinner table with Henry Blackaby. He was talking about the relationship that we have with God and its wearisome task at times. He said, we must remember that love is the discipline. He's right. We don't push through in Christianity to do our best so that we can be the best. We do it so we can work out our faith in love for our Lord. It's because of my love for God that I must be disciplined. And John said it at its best. And this is love, he wrote, that we walk according to his commandments. Watch yourselves so that you may not lose what we have worked for, but may win a full reward. Everyone who goes ahead and does not abide in the teaching of Christ doesn't have God. But whoever abides in the teaching has both the Father and the Son. Press on. We can make it. We can stand in defense to the daily distractions of life. And we can overcome this summer's plague of laziness and apathy. Remember, do your very best today, for today is all you're promised. Tomorrow will take care of itself.